And how you guys doing? Uh, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and comment below and share it if you will. Today, I wanted to just take a, a little break from the biker news. I've been thinking a lot lately. I don't know if it's because of the holiday season or whatever it is. But one percenters are a huge topic on YouTube, the internet, what have you. And yet I play a big important role in biker news. Sad to say that's the truth. And I don't like talking about my personal opinions anymore about any particular club or any MC stuff because I like to keep it biker news related. Other than that, I like talking independent stuff, having fun. But this one has been nagging at me. Really been nagging at me. And again, it could be because of the holiday season. True one percenters. I was once asked that by a subscriber. I don't know, what is it, a couple months ago? Whatever it was, I was asked. And I didn't give an answer. A true one percenter, if you believe in honor, loyalty, respect, a code usually a lot of people, especially a new generation, don't know. They don't know what that means. Yeah, they'll go MMNR or L or whatever the hell it is when they sign their names and stuff. But there's so much meaning behind that. And really, the ones that epitomize that are the guys that are doing time right now for their clubs. All clubs. Maybe it's not a one percenter, but hey, they're doing time for their clubs. They sacrificed their freedom on behalf of something they loved so much, they believed in so much, they gave up their freedom for the club. That's hardcore right there. As you know, we do a lot of stories where you'll see people flipping on their club. And yeah, that's where you can usually tell I get that disdain in my voice. It's because I do know that there's guys serving time that gladly went down for what they believed in. They knew what they were getting into. They played the game. And they accepted the consequences of playing the game. Where a lot of people won't do that. My God, do I have uh, a lot of friends. I've been visiting one for over 20 years now. Doing time in a federal pen in Indiana. Doing two life sentences. And it's over a club. Club business stuff. But never once has he ever wavered in being proud of what he is. Some people will find Jesus and turn it all away just so they get out of the joint. No, these are guys that accepted the responsibility and they still have it in their hearts. Isn't that what a one percenter is supposed to be? What Ain't that what a biker is supposed to be? You have it in your heart. You stand behind it. Whatever you believe, you don't waver in your opinions. And those are these guys. They gave up their families. They gave it all up. And you'll have some people say, well, you know, that's their problem. I would have never done that. Blah, 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 blah. Well, then we know where you stand, don't we? And if you're in a club, we know where that stands. But you got to give them tons of respect for what they sacrificed. NCOM, they have 
a letter that goes out to bikers or it's called bikers behind bars. I think they got a circulation of over 200 and something right now. 200 and something bikers that were in clubs are getting that newsletter. And it tells them everything that's going on in the scene, blah, 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 blah. But it keeps them attached to the scene. Because if you got guys doing life in prison, they're never going to see the light of day. But they're going to be able to hang on to something. And again, with the holidays coming up, a lot of them have been written off by their families. Hell, some might have been written off by their clubs. I, you just got to admire somebody like that. You really do. You got to admire never waning from what they believed in. You had some great leaders of clubs that did their prison time, and they did it gladly. They never turned on their club. You had Pike, Fertilio, Taco Bowman. You had Sonny. Great leaders, very great leaders, and I know I'm missing a ton of them. But that's the dedication that they put to that 1% diamond. And I'm not saying the ones that are on the street don't. I'm just saying true 1% and the meaning behind what they thought it meant, man, did they uphold that. That's what many of the clubbers hold true. Regardless of your opinions about it, they held true. They knew what loyalty was. They knew what respect was. And it is sad that the internet has taken a lot of that away. One of the reasons why I enjoy watching Shaggy so much, regardless of what your opinions are on him, he talks in a way that I can actually understand. The no PC, the no bullshit, that's the type of guys I was always used to. So I love watching his stuff. And he tries to really put it out and lay it down for you so you understand it. His club, lots of guys went to the joint protecting his club. Maybe that's the generational gap with me and some of the other people that talk about stuff. It was a beautiful time because you actually knew that your brother was sitting right next to you. You didn't have to worry because it was a rare event. Yeah, it happened where people flipped. It happened. It always does. But it was rare because it was a different way of thinking. When somebody said, this is my life, they meant that shit. It wasn't just a slogan to look cool. They truly believed in it. Brothers were their family. And what would you do for your blood brother or your blood sister? If something went down, you're taking the rap to protect them. Same in this instance. Hopefully that does answer the question. What I believe a true one percenter is. Well, the ones serving time right now for protecting their club. 
protecting the brothers within that club. I think that can be the best definition that I personally can give. Like I said, I don't really like doing it anymore where I'll talk about clubs outside of a biker news type of environment. But with the holidays, I thought, you know what? It's important for people to know that there are some strong ass, hardcore, one percenters that believe in that diamond. And I think that's why a lot of people have a problem with new clubs that put on a diamond because they don't, they never put the work in for it. They never lost guys to the grave. They never lost guys to prison because it was them guys that had to set the way for them. And it totally disrespects these bigger clubs that have been around decades that had to earn it. You know, oh, they just started up. No, they earned that shit, man. It wasn't okay. They were, you know what? For one, you got to know what time period it is before you even say any stupid crap like that. I think that's one thing that always gets to me is when somebody says, well, they didn't ask for permission. Learn your history, man. Stop being so damn ignorant. In the 50s, 60s, they had to be some of the hardest times for these clubs to start up because the cultural crap of the time, they looked at them like dirt bags. Where do you think the cops started all this? It wasn't all, oh, let's, you know, harass them and stuff like, no. It was putting your face down in the dirt and kicking your ass. Then moving into other areas. Yes, they earn that stuff. They earn the right to have it. We can go on and on about asking permission. But you cannot equate anything that our club starts out today with what happened generations ago. You cannot equate it because you're ignorant if you try. You're thinking in a present time when them clubs started in a whole different era. And you're also not looking what they had to go through. And that right there is a sad state of affairs because you thought people would at least educate themselves in what they're trying to, to say. You're going to come and say, well, well, they didn't ask for permission. Why should everybody else? You're a freaking moron then. You probably haven't been writing at all. Or you're too busy watching the freaking TV shows or YouTube and all that crap. These guys went through hell. They played with shit. They paid with blood, sweat, and tears, man. And I think this has to be the number one reason, in my opinion, when people say, well, clubs just need to get along. You're thinking of it as of today's date. You're not looking at the past where brothers were lost. Brothers are sitting in prison right now for the rest of their lives. You're not looking at that. Does it need to evolve? Yeah. But I believe it's going to take a different generation of the older guys retiring and stuff before it even happens that way to even look at it that way. It would be real hard, say, you lost a blood sister, okay? Wouldn't you want revenge if something bad happened to her? Would you let it go? Same thing with clubs. 
hopefully it will where everybody gets along. There's a lot of movement in that direction. But don't say it so, how can I say it? Uh, thank you, Air. With condescendence in your voice. Because right now you're ready to spend the holidays with your families. Well, guess what? They're behind bars. They're spending it with other, they're spending it with other inmates that don't get to see their, it, it's not a joke in the joint, man. They don't get to spend it with their families. Why? Because they believed in what they were doing for the club they were involved with. So I just wanted to put some words out there. Again, I'm not going to be doing it much, but this is one subject I thought that needed to be addressed because it's not addressed much, if at all. And I hopefully some of these other channels will talk about it. Anyway, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. You'll see some videos popping up with... Uh, the end screen, go ahead and hit on one of them videos, man. Go check some of this other stuff out. Uh, with that, I'm going to go over to the Morning Hoot, which you can listen to on, what is it called? All your podcast platforms. Second half of the show is coming up. I'll see you on the other side. Rock on, baby. Rock on, baby.